Hi, welcome to the Love Advantage and Love Vibe TV. My name is Macy and I'm your big happy love coach. And we are here on the second video in the Know Your Love Repellents video series. And we've been talking about all the ways we push away love or sabotage our love life and don't even know it. And I've been sharing with you my stinks model, which encompasses all the different love repellents because if any of these are true for you, your love life is stinky. So we want to learn how to transform that. So today we're focusing on the letter T and the letter T stands for trust. And specifically, this is about a lack of trust for yourself. So when you don't trust yourself, then it's really hard to make decisions. And maybe you feel like, wow, I can't trust myself because I continuously date losers and jerks, or maybe you even married one. And now you feel that trauma of, oh wow, I can't ever do that again. I can't trust myself. Well, the thing is, oftentimes we are making decisions out of fear. We're making decisions from um, influences from our past, from our families, from our communities, from magazines. We're really often looking outside of us anyway to decide what to do and, and not even really being conscious of that. So it's no wonder that we start thinking that it's us. So how do we start working with that? I mean, really, this is about coming into ourselves and starting to listen to ourselves more deeply. Because when we aren't doing that, then it's like we've completely unplugged our mechanism that informs us and guides us. And that makes it really difficult to do anything. And when we are in that place where we don't know what to do, then we don't have the self-esteem or the confidence to, to go out and date and meet people. And really, the great news is we really have everything we need inside. So here are my tips. Number one, know that you have really a powerful navigation system. You have everything you need inside you right now and especially as women because we have even a more powerful sense of intuition in fact it's 16 times more powerful than what a man has so we can use that but if we're ignoring it or just like continuously looking elsewhere then we're not taking advantage of it the second one is to stop and listen. So coming inward and starting to listen to that. And if you listen to yourself and really just continuously come back to yourself, come back to yourself and tune in and allow yourself some space, then your being can give you the information. It takes a little time. If we are always just reacting, then we are reacting out of fear. And what yogis know is that we have a process that our mind goes through. It's first going to go to make sure that there's no danger. And then if you give it a little time, it'll go to a place where it says, well, maybe there's opportunity here. And then if you give it a little time, it'll go to neutral. So that's what we want to do. We want to be able to take some breaths 
and allow our mind to come to that neutral space so that we can make a decision that really is coming from our heart and soul. My third recommendation is to start practicing this in the world, like start practicing following your wisdom and see how your life unfolds. If you feel like you're you're still not sure, like, I don't know, I don't know what, how would I know if it's a yes or a no? One really simple trick I like to teach is to practice in the grocery store, like going into the grocery store, especially the produce aisle, and just tune in, like which vegetables and fruits are calling out to you, which ones are saying yes, and which ones are like, eh. You just feel like, oh, well, that is exciting for me. Maybe it's an eggplant. And then maybe on that day, avocado's not so exciting. But on another day, it may be totally different information. So just consciously feeling what it feels like to be in a yes or in a no. And then you can use that moving out into other areas of your life. Certainly in the dating world, this is a very important tool. We have to be able to trust ourselves in making these kinds of decisions and not feeling so fearful or out of control or, or like we don't know what to do because that's a really hard place. When you're thinking that you don't know what to do or there's something wrong with you, then you're really working at a low vibe fearful place. Today's teaching all about being aware of not trusting yourself and using these tools of knowing that you have everything within you, listening deeply and trusting what you hear when you listen, following your yeses and nos, and putting that into action so you can start seeing the results, seeing what it's like to follow your heart. Thanks for joining today, and we will see you on the next video. Bye. All I want is just to be me, cause what I feel is free. How do you even know when you're trusting yourself? I think a lot of times we just act based on old beliefs. So I think it could be scary to, to say, okay, this is, I think, I don't think I believe that. I think I believe this and acting on it. And then, and then you're waiting. What's going to happen next? Yeah, when you're paying attention to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I definitely have noticed times when I've acted in a way that I was trying to please someone. Sure. Yeah, I think the people pleaser thing, I've heard that described as like walking around with a bucket with a hole in it, where every time someone gives you approval or smiles at you, you're trying to fill that pail to get happiness, 
but it always has to be refilled and it's never enough. Whereas if you're getting that recognition from yourself, it's a never ending supply. Right, so self-trust includes taking care of yourself in all those ways. Right, not being dependent mm -hmm. on what other random opinions other people have. Mm -hmm. You've got this sort of steadfastness about what it means to be mm. you authentically. Yeah, I love that. That's a really good one. Really like being able to risk being you and just showing up as you and mm -hmm. letting that be bold and and exactly what you really authentically feel. Right. In a way where other people's opinions have no effect. Right, on. exactly. And so there's like this flow there. There's listening, there's acting on what you are hearing when you listen, and then there's letting go of whatever other people think. Right, I mean, we know that other people's opinions are theirs, they have nothing to do with us. I mean, we talk a lot about that with dating. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's just practicing that listening and awareness and that develops a confidence in knowing who you are yeah that's awesome I feel like when you are really tuned in with yourself and for me that had to come with practicing meditation mm -hmm. and I know I learned you know in meditation we're really listening and we're getting that information but it's it's more than that it's like being able to hear your soul talking and then act on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I think for me, a lot of it was doing some journaling work around beliefs that I don't, that I took on from when I was a kid that aren't necessarily true for me anymore as an adult. Mm -hmm. Now that I can kind of think for myself and I've matured are those beliefs real for me anymore? Tony Robbins talks about it as like your primary question. Like when you're in a challenging time and you're getting kind of in a tiz about stuff, like what are you saying to yourself? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know for me, it's, you know, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? And that's like a reoccurring question that I've asked all my life. And... And he says, which I love this, I love, he says, then you need to find a new question. You need to find a question that aligns with your life. Mm. I mean, you have had probably the same thing with healing. Totally, yeah. I mean, I've had health issues uh, that I've dealt with since I was a kid. With, uh, you know, doctors saying, oh, you're going to have this for the rest of your life. They don't know that. I know. What was the question? What do you think your primary question was? Do I have the capacity to heal? Mm-hmm. Can I heal just like I see all my patients, a lot of my patients healing and the miracles that they show with their healing? Yeah, so what would be your new question? In what ways can I heal? Or what type of healing can I expect? Or, or what do I need to do to heal? Or what is healing right now? What is it? Yeah, what is I mean, healing? And it's interesting mean? to look at what the new question was. I mean, mine would be more like, what am I doing right? Mm -hmm. What's working? Mm -hmm. Trusting yes. self is a really challenging experience because it really requires. I think the biggest thing is taking that risk mm -hmm. of just doing it. Mm -hmm. When you start practicing that, trusting in your, your own intuition, developing your own beliefs that you can trust in, it creates this sort of opening. 
it's like you're more open to to uh, when, when you're being yourself then people respond to that mm -hmm. I think there is a, a self-love or a self-respect that is developed yeah definitely I can see that and self-love and self-respect attracts love and respect mm -hmm. yeah definitely what's Be that RuPaul quote that you love how are you going to love anyone else if you don't love yourself? Yeah. I mean, that's it. That's self-respect. Right. right. Self-trust right there. So it means that you're you're listening to yourself, you're taking care of yourself, you're, you're present for yourself, and you're committed to yourself. You're following through with your own personal needs so that you're, you can actually trust yourself. And be willing to change because you can say, no, this is my belief. This is right for me. This is what I trust. And tomorrow be willing to say, you know what? I changed my mind. That's, that doesn't quite work for me today. And be willing to be yeah. flexible with it. And honest. And yeah. honest. Really like that. Nice. Good job. I must be a praise for the love I